Hello, and welcome to the Miami Open, where the top men's and women's tennis players battle it out for the right to claim the title of champion. However, for this video, we're going to be focusing on a different aspect. A crew that works tirelessly behind the scenes to make sure that those pros can duke it out on the world stage. They come from all over to offer their experience and skills to the tournament and their players. Many of these professionals own their own tennis shops and still take time to help aid the players. These racket stringers are here from the beginning of qualifiers to the end of finals. Day in and day out, they stay behind the machines working tirelessly. Sometimes this can result in over 17 hours of pure work time for the crew and hundreds of rackets completed. Lucky for me, I was able to work next to some of these guys. And I got to ask them a few questions about how they got started in the stringing world. Let's check it out. My name's Matt Steverson and I own Matt's Tennis. It's it's catchy, I know, in Altamont Springs, Florida. And I got started in stringing kind of by mistake. During my college tennis career, my coach always strung my rackets and when I was about ready to leave, he called me to his house and said, you need to learn how to do this because you're going to get down into Florida and in his words, some idiot is going to string your rackets and you're not going to like it, so learn how to do it. So I sat there and I dutifully listened and practiced and tried everything and left his house knowing I was never going to do it. And I get down to Florida, sure enough, I walk into the big tennis shop in the area, get racket strung, and it's horrible. Just a terrible job. So I went to another shop and was getting inconsistent work. So I said, once again, my coach was right. So it's time to get a machine string my own racket. So I bought a used machine. Then said, well, I'll string my own rackets and I'll pay for the machine and whatever time it'll be good. Never intended to string for anyone else but myself. And the next thing you know, your friends are giving their rackets at you to string them. Of course, your best friends are throwing that you saying, I need a Tuesday. So next thing you know, you got a little side business going, okay, my friends and or whatever, okay, that's fine. The next thing you know, you're running the business. It's totally by accident. And then somebody asked me to string a tournament. Well, I don't really want to, but you need somebody, so okay. So I go from not wanting to string at all so in the seven or eight years of stringing first, I'm one of the best players in the world. It's a really stupid thing, but it did happen, and it's been a lot of fun. You know, a lot of funny stuff hasn't happened to me during these tournaments, but something pretty neat did. The first pro tournament I ever strung, one of the guys I strung for was Jimmy Connors. And yeah, he was a really nice guy to us. I don't, his reputation I don't know was different, but he was really good to us. So at the end of the tournament, he drops off a racket. In those days, they strung like one or two rackets a day, not like nowadays. And he said, string this racket tonight for the finals, my wife will come pick it up and she will pay you for all the rackets we show. His wife was Patty McGuire, Playmate of the Year, 1976, I think it was. This was 10 years later. So we're like, all right. So Patty comes by later and she is drop dead gorgeous still. And she comes up and asks me, do you have Jimmy's racket? So I handed, handed the racket and I say, well, Jimmy said you would pay us for all the rackets we show this week. And her, she says, oh, really? So he didn't tell her anything. So she was has this huge bottle of bills and pays us and gives us a big smile that goes walking off and I still think of it to this day. It's one of the neatest things that ever happened to me. But one other neat thing happened to me here that as a tennis geek was really nice. I strung some rackets for Garbini Murgaruza and she's coached by Conchita Martinez. So I got to string a racket for a Wimbledon champion and give it to another Wimbledon champion, which was like totally cool. If you're not really into stringing, you won't understand it at all. But it was probably the coolest thing that's happened to me stringing rackets, period, in my life. I was really glad I got to do that. And it didn't get handed off to someone to give to her. So that was really a cool thing. And that's it. My name is Chris Gaudreau. I'm the owner and operator of the Racket Coop in New Haven. I've been there for 30 years. Um, I started in 1991, a uh, day after college, and um, literally within 30 days, I played my last college match, turned 23, and opened a store within about 30 days, and I'm still there today. 
I got started in stringing when I was 16. Um, I took over um, helping uh, my then boss who traveled to different tournaments and while he was traveling and stringing professionally, I would do the retail while he was gone. And then inevitably I started stringing not only for uh, retail, but for professionals. And uh, still to this day, I try to do a couple tournaments a year just to stay sharp. So I, I, you know, everybody's got a story, right? Um, I do remember um, a night match in Venus Williams is playing. This is in New Haven. And um, she always brought her rackets in at last minute. So she'd bring six rackets in and she would need them like she'd be playing in 15 minutes. So um, she's the, the star of the tournament. You, know, you, you can't say no. And um, I'm really scared of running out onto the court because you know the crowds are so big. Um, and also it's my, my home. So people always shout at me. So I would constantly have to bring rackets out one after the other, after the other, after the other. And every time I ran out there, people would start shouting my name because it's my hometown. And um, you know, I just get really nervous in front of crowds. So that was, that was one, one crowd. It may have even been Michelob Light Night, I don't remember, but um, so that kind of, you know, I'm not crazy about running, running stuff out into the crowds. Hi, I'm Gerald Sarmiento, Master Racket Technician um, for Tau Tennis Shops. Um, I'm also a high performance coach for the Nassau Tennis Club uh, and I work with a lot of high performance juniors, uh, sectionally and nationally ranked players. And I got into stringing as a junior myself, um, roughly in 1991 when I started breaking strings uh, every hour. And my father said, you have to do this yourself because we're going to go broke. Um, and then once I learned how to string, I got the stringing job at the club that I was at. And eventually I got pretty good at it. And my coach said, well, there's a job in New York City that requires, that needs a stringer. And lo and behold, like, all right, well, let me, let me take that job. And I went down that job at the first day was about 35 rackets. I didn't get through all 35 rackets that were on the queue. I walked into a room that was filled with rackets. It was like literally stacks, three stacks of rackets. And it's like, okay, you're gonna, this is your workplace. And I start at seven in the morning. The, the shop closed at 7 p.m. And I wasn't complete. My boss came up and so like, Gerald, you gotta go home. It's like, we're closing. It's like, well, the rackets aren't there. It's like, no, come back tomorrow, finish it. You, you, we're gonna have more. And that's how I got involved heavily into more stringing. And as I looked into it, as I did it, I was like, you know what, this is actually a really good job. Okay, uh, my name is Jonathan Pham. Uh, I'm string for TC Men's and Women's Tennis. And I also have a private business on the side uh, for, called String Busters. Uh, so I started that uh, about five years ago, 2016, I would say. Um, but for the most part, I've been stringing for TCU since 2011, and that's the bulk of my string experience. Um, I think the first time, well, I do remember the first time I strung, strung my very first racket. Uh, it was sophomore year in high school, so 10th grade. Uh, I broke in a string and I wanted to string, restring it, but I didn't want to spend the money on the labor. So what I ended up doing was because, you know, my coaches had a stringing machine in the room. Uh, basically me and three of my friends were gathered around this machine and we figured it out in about three hours how to, from start to finish, how to finish stringing this racket just so I could play with it again. Uh, so that was quite fun because you know we knew nothing. We didn't look at the instructions. I mean, I feel like I feel like YouTube was barely a thing in 2006. Um, so that's that's how my journey started, and I kind of fell in love with it then. You know, um, 
you know, didn't know anything about tying. I was just like, let's let's make sure the string holds once we tie the knot. And then uh, from then on, my coach kind of helped me, you know, refine my technique from then because he had a lot of string experience. And that, I think that's where my love for stringing basically began. So, there you go. All right, my name is Randy Orbaugh. Um, I live in an uh, area called Gambrels, Odenton, Maryland, which is near Annapolis. Uh, I have a, uh, as a side hustle, uh, a, a small company called Center Court uh, Stringing. Um, so I do mostly uh, a couple of high school uh, teams, uh, local clubs, uh, club players. So I'm a bit of a fish out of water here. This is my first, uh, my first tournament. Um, I got into stringing out of necessity. My daughter played uh, four years of varsity tennis, and my wife's a tennis player, so we would have to drive up to Baltimore to get racket strung, and that was pretty much would burn up half a Saturday uh, taking care of all of that. And so I bought a stringing machine, uh, started to teach myself a little bit how to do it. Um, and then one day I got a call from uh, one of my daughter's uh, teammates, uh, one of the parents, and said, hey, I heard you're stringing Jenna's rackets. Uh, you mind stringing Sarah's while you're, while you're at it? And, uh, and I did. And he said, hey, you know, you ought to think about, and I got another, another call from another parent, another parent. And, uh, one of them says, hey, you ought to think about like, maybe doing something because uh, uh, you're like the only game in town. And uh, one thing led to another. And, uh, you know, um, in 2019, I volunteered at the uh, City Open, and uh, I was on the transportation uh, team, and I had come back uh, late one afternoon off of a drop-off out of Dulles Airport, and I said, hey, can you bring this guy uh, to Reagan? He has a flight to catch. I said, yeah, sure. So we're, um, we're driving, uh, you know, through DC and a little bit of traffic and talking and uh, I looked up at this guy in the mirror and I said, hey, what? And he's obviously not a player and, and uh, I said, well, what are you, what's your role here? What are you doing? And he goes, oh, I'm the head stringer here for Technifiber. And I was like, no kidding, I string right. I, like, I, you know, I was trying to get in the stringing room. And um, well, and that was Craig Brotman. And uh, we ended up staying in, uh, staying in touch for the past couple of years and um, invited me to string here at the tournament. Uh, so, uh, so yeah, I think this is a, what I've sort of learned from this is that it is a very small, tightly knit uh, community, uh, the stringing community, and um, you know, you should, uh, you know, you should take, take advantage of, uh, of things that, of uh, the relationships that you make. I'm not take advantage, but um, you know, um, uh, you know, uh, build relationships with the people. That... My name is Craig Brotman. I'm originally from the Maryland, D.C. area. Currently live in Atlanta. Um, the way I got started is very interesting. When I was 15 years old, I had just qualified for the uh, Mid-Atlantic uh, Hardcore Championships, and I was playing with a head graphite director rackets, and my dad said, for qualifying, you can now, I'm gonna give you uh, the opportunity to play with gut back then, and uh, gut back then was 36 feet. I had no idea, I didn't string. So I gave the rackets to this local stringer in Maryland and uh, she strung the rackets and when I got them back, it was missing the two bottom cross strings. And uh, I said, why didn't you just put in nylon to fill those two strings? She didn't do it. And the labor then was $12 a racket. And uh, I refused to pay it. And she took me to small claims court and I countersued and my dad took a picture of what she had done. I got from head the stringing instructions, took it to court, and the judge uh, ruled in my favor. And I won that. She had to replace the two sets of gut. And I figured, I, when we walked out of court, I said to my dad, if this person can make money stringing wrong, I can learn how to string right. And uh, he bought me an Ectolon Model H to start with. And we put it in the family living room and I learned how to string and uh, it's been a long journey. It's been a long journey. Been stringing 35 years. Yeah. 
I mean, the way I got on the Pro Tour stringing is I was one of Nick Boletari's first students, and my roommate was Jimmy Arias, who at the time was five in the world. So, you know, as I was moving up stringing, and he came into D.C. to play the Washington Star Tournament at the time, which is now the City Open, he asked me to string his rackets, and I snuck in the back of the tournament. I mean, I've been through it all. It's been fun. It's been a lot of fun. No, I mean, the running joke in the stringing room is we make the finals every week of a tournament. Uh, and it's just, you know, the environment being around the players and a lot of these players we have seen from the time they were juniors to college to all the way up to this level. I mean, I remember being on John Isner's uh, college recruiting trip when he went to Wake Forest on a recruiting trip. I was there. And now to see, you know, he's been one of the top Americans for, I don't know, 15 years. I was, you know, we were there in DC when he started his whole run, you know, got to the finals, his first ATP event. Uh, I think he lost to Roddick, seven, six in the third. So, I mean, we've been through it. Yeah, it's been fun. In the words of our lead stringer, we always make it to the finals. Take care.